everyone. This is Masoudi. Hi guys, this is Omid. Welcome to new session. Yes. Last session we did a bit of not no refactor and retrospective. We talked about the uh, rights and wrongs of our application. The the you know. We we will uh, we will face it in the yeah, future. Yeah, we will face them. We will fix them. Predict some uh, some problems. Hmm? Yes. That the beginner programmers like me. Yes. We will face in the future. This session, uh, just I wanted to complete the this feature set here. Uh, we don't have modifying product and customer, and and the persisting the shopping carts. Just I wanted to <coughs> complete this feature set. And so, so if you just s take a look at these classes here, as we said before, these are actually data structures. Mm -hmm. So, um, some of you may say that no, these are these are objects. When we instantiate these classes, we take an object from them. But Uncle Bob and many other guys, great guys, uh, you know, they they say that. They make distinctions between data structure and an object. They they have dif they have their differences, you know. Mm -hmm. They distinct. Uh, they distinct in in a way that a data structure is just for it just made of a bunch of fields, bunch of memory cells mm -hmm. that can store data in them. Uh, just that, just that. So when we instantiate from a class that is a data structure, we are, we are actually instantiating a mem memory cell that has, has got a name for each piece of its information and we can store and restore information from it. And we can instantiate a lot of uh, these data structures. Mm -hmm. but, but if we didn't, for example, have this feature, the class for making data structure, we, we should write the old fashion that we did at the first sessions, that, as you recall, re as you remember, we had to spread the information f about a single entity, for example, about a product. It has name, maybe a thumbnail, it may be how much do we have in the inventory, mm -hmm. the price, or many other properties. We had to uh, store them actually in, in separate lists and Accessing those information, accessing information about a single entity was very hard because we had to first indicate, the, the determine and the index, mm -hmm. and then we had to go to all those lists to access the information about a single entity. That, but this data structure, this notation here, this class, helped us to group them and just think them and access them as, as, as a one. But now we, there is no, there's nothing wrong with, with data structures. They are very, very useful and we need them, we should use them. But objects are, are very different in a way that they don't expose actually their, uh, their, you know, their fields. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are actually fields. But pro uh, objects does not have fields, they have properties. There is a big difference between a property and a field. So in Java, everything is field. All those memory cells that you define in class, mm -hmm. you are defining a field. They are called field. But in Kotlin, uh, the, in Java, you don't have the uh, property thing. You have to, for example, first make the, that field private Mm -hmm. and then put setter and getter for that, that for accessing yes, and yes. modifying that field mm -hmm. to make it actually property. Yes. So, so I want to give an example about the difference between the field and a property. So for example, we, we've got a car and we are writing a class about a car. The model of this car, yes, the model, the name, the model number or whatever, it, it's actually field. It, it is a piece of information, for example, 1.4, for example, uh -huh. whatever, Dodge Name version, uh -huh. yes. But the fuel, for example, the fuel percentage, the fuel percentage of it, it is not some kind of number stored in a field. It is actually property. It, it is 
actually being calculated with taking a lot of things into yes into consideration that shows the result finally. for example we, we can have a car without knowing whether it is it is a truck or it is a s simple muscle car or sedan or yes we have e so we have a vehicle we don't know if it is a car or if it is a truck or if it is a bus mm -hmm. but and each of them has has separ distinct mechanism for their fuel yes mm -hmm. one of them is i i believe they say diesel it, one of them works with gasoline mm -hmm. another for example works with some kind of, with other kind of fuels and but they they all have the property of the percentage of their fuel no matter what what the type of that is yes so when we ask a vehicle that how much fuel you've got it must a answer us with the number percentage so we are actually uh, you know asking an object so so it will make more sense so there is there is difference between uh, property and a field and all we have in Kotlin is property we don't have these are actually properties we are these are properties these these are properties but they have they say they have backing field they have a back field backing field is, is a memory cell we are not hiding anything here they, they are whatever they are. The customer mm -hmm. name is actually a memory cell for. There is no calculation. Yes, or there is no calculation or, or some kind of anything. But but let's say for example this shopping cart item. Yes. Mm -hmm. The shopping cart item, we want to begin to make it actually an object. Uh, we can talk to object. We can ask object things, and mm -hmm. we can give them things and ask them to modify themselves and answer us. You say that when. When we can call it object, uh, the time the time we can talk to it, we can call it yes, object. Yes. Yes. Then we can. Talk when, to that, when we don't talk to the to the, asking to the thing, talking means um, asking question. For example, do you have this or give me the result? Yes. Give me the, do the that thing. Um, go do do. But when, when when we don't talk to the to this thing to the instance of class, and all we do is just passing around and telling other functions that's to not a class. to use it. That's not an object. That's not an object. That's a data structure actually. Mm -hmm. But but when we when we interact with, with itself with mm -hmm. this with this instance, that's the, that's when it is it is actually an object. So so writing functions, you've seen we've write we've written a lot of functions, and all of them are outside of a class. And they are first, you know, first class citizens. They are top level, top level functions. But we could also write functions inside classes. When we write classes, functions inside classes, we are actually writing functions to interact with the data structure. Mm -hmm. And at that point, that will become an object. So, for example, the shopping cart item. For, I believe we have print, print the. Customer. No, no, no. The shopping cart. Where is where is printing the shopping cart? Printing the receipt, maybe. That's no, this is this is, this is this is the printing the shopping cart. And as you can see, for calculating the total price, yes, mm -hmm. for calculating the total price of receipt or shopping cart, all we do is multiplying the amount of each item to the price of that product. Mm -hmm. So we are acting. Uh, we are interacting with this item as an edit data structure. We are actually doing the calculation outside of the class, outside of that instance. We are just using that instance as memory. But say we, we would be able to uh, ask the item itself to give its total price to us, yes? It would be very nice. So we have this item, mm -hmm. yes? Uh, it is. It means that when we said item, give us the price. Yes, and item dot should, get, do that. get me your right. total price. Mm -hmm. It should calculate and give me the result. So let's say we have a function, fun, inside shopping cart item. I say get me, for example, yes, total price. It's a function. It has access. You know, first, <coughs> I, you must understand this, that each instance that you create from the class mm -hmm. has got its own access. 
has got its own memories. It, each of them has got its own, for example, in this case, its own product name and amount. And for, when you write function inside the class, and when you ask that function, it will actually work with the memory and the properties that it has on itself. Yes, it won't access to the other objects of the same type. So, for example, uh, as an example, we are both human, human beings, yes. You have your mind, your memory, mm -hmm. and I have mine. If you ask me, what is your name? You will I will answer it based on the information on my memory, yes. And so you, you got your own, you've got your own, for example, name property or name field. And if I ask you your name or your age, you will, for example, if I ask your age, you will do some calculation based on your date of birth, and then you'll answer me. So actually, age is a property, it is not a field, it is not some number there. It is, it is changing, mm -hmm. and it, it, you should calculate it every time that I ask you. So all the, all the questions that I ask you is actually I'm calling functions on you. I'm calling your functions. So we are both humans. We are both instances of the same class, the class human, yes? Second. And we've both got the same memory cells. We've got name, we've got age, we've got, for example, skin color or whatever. But we've got our own copy of them for ourselves. You know, I, I, I have got my own copy of my memory. And you, you, in order for you to access those memory, those information of mine, you have to ask me through the functions I provide mm -hmm. to you. I don't, I don't, you know, make them public. That's make just them, for you. Make them public to be accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, that, for example, <laughs> it, it is funny. For example, if, if our mind was, was accessible publicly to, to, to <laughs> ask, to get information from it without asking the guy itself, it, it was actually kind of a flash card, <laughs> flash memory card. Yes, it, is, it, it was actually a data structure. That's open. <laughs> it's a data structure. You go pl plug it somewhere, you see information, you modify, you that write, read. Secret, <laughs> so so it, was, it was actually, it would be actually a data structure. But, but we are not a data structure, we are object. Mm -hmm. We've got a bunch of memory, and to access those memories and those properties, you have to ask the guy itself, and it will calculate mm -hmm. and then answer. So that's... There is a bridge. Yes. Right. That's what we are doing here. This is, this is data structure. You know, we are, we are not asking a shopping cart instance mm -hmm. to do some calculations, but we are converting this shopping cart item to an object to interact with, to ask questions and get answers from it. Uh, so if I say get me total price, it should return, return amount multiplied by the price of product, yes? But it, it, it has the name of the product. It, it, it doesn't have the price here. It should first should pass it. access. No, 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 we can, we can pass. Yes, yes, we can pass the product name, but that, that, that is not very neat. That is not correct. The better way is actually access and find the product data structure. Mm -hmm. we, 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 the product data structures are here. We can access them by name and get the price, yes? So we've, we've done it before. I think in, let me show you, in, in printing the shopping cart, the price for product is actually done with this get price of product, yes? yes? Get price of product and the product name. So I can say item multiplied by get price of product and product name. And it is now returning an integer, and we should say that this function is returning an integer, yes? So now, I've got this function inside this class. Now, here in printing shopping cart, I am iterating over all of the items of shopping cart, and they are shopping cart item, yes? So for getting the total price of each item, I don't have any more to calculate these things myself. I ask the item, get me your total price. Mm -hmm. So item is actually a shopping cart item, yes? And there is no need for this line anymore. I'm telling this item 
get me your total price and it is calculating based on its own memory. So I want to go further. So we, are, we are calculating the total price of item to calculate the total price of the receipt, yes? Where is the item here? Item is here. Um, we have defined for, it there. For all items in shopping cart items. And it, it is of type shopping ah, cart he, item. He himself understood. Yes, yeah, it, it is inferred. This, this, this feature is called type inference. Mm -hmm. It has inferred that item is type of shopping cart item. So we are using this for what? What is the purpose of this one? Yes, to get me to your total price. We are asking the item for its make, total First of all, to make it uh, as an object. Yes. And then uh, I think that that's more neat. You, that's you, neat. When you want to do, do this calculation, you can use it every, yes. even wherever you, you like yes. in the code. That's correct. If we if we don't put this function, we have to, to write to the shopping cart item, item. Mm -hmm. for actually <coughs> calculating the total price of item. We have to do this calculation mm -hmm. everywhere, copy and paste it everywhere. But now we can ask the item itself, and it will calculate and give us. Uh, my question was that it this this get me total price. This, the purpose of this function is to actually calculate the total price of the shopping cart, the mm -hmm. receipt. So it would be very nice and cool if I was able to say, get me your total price, yes? Ask the shopping cart at the first place. What is your total price? I'm asking the shopping cart for its total price. Oh. So, so, so I'm converting this data structure to an object. This data structure, in order to answer my question, it has to go over all of its items, its own items, yes? Its own items here. And it has to iterate over them and then app append them and together and return me the results, so, yes? So I, I can write a for loop, item in items, yes? And I can now ask the item its total price, yes? Mm -hmm. So I have another variable here, total price. It is zero at the first, at the beginning, and I plus equal. add the total price of it, each item to it. And then I return the total price as the total price of, I'm, I'm just, just I'm saying it is returning an integer, as the total price of the shopping cart, yes? So now, here, I have no more to do this. I have access to the shopping cart. So the total price has not to be, you know, it has not, it has been, we can ask the shopping cart itself. We don't have to actually do cal ourselves, calculate huh? ourselves. We can do it, do it here. We can, we can say shopping cart, please. Get me your total price. price. And now it will work, and it is very cleaner. Yes? Yes. So, so this is the power of objects, that we can write functions inside them that actually operate on their own memory, and they modify their own memory. If we will actually, you will see that we will command the objects to modify themselves. So this shopping cart is, can now answer, each instance of shopping cart can now answer us the question about their total price. The shopping cart item can also do that. This is a function and it will work. So when, 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 a brace, when inside a brace you have got only a single line of code, you can actually delete that brace and write it directly bottom of the, for example, for loop. This for loop has got only a single line and it is actually for printing the items. Mm -hmm. Let me just run the application to see, to prove that it is working. <laughs> it is working as before. Uh, so let me just print the product list. There is no product. I define a product, Apple 500, define another product, Orange 200, then I say create shopping cart, enter customer name, me, please enter product name, Apple, five of them, yes, 
orange, 10 of them, and no, there's no more item. And it created the, the shopping cart, but it didn't print it, yes? You have to call it. Uh -huh, for, for printing the... I think you should yes, push yes, number I seven or six. Push number, print number, print the customer purchases this, number eight. It asks who is the customer, I say me, I, I entered me, yes, me. Yes, it is printing the receipt. Mm -hmm. The receipt is actually printing, it is Apple 5, orange 10, mm -hmm. and we have not multiplied it here, we have not provided more information. Apple product name, yes. And it is 4,500 is actually That's correct. correct. Mm -hmm. But but we didn't uh, show the calculation of that. Yes. So take this session as an introduction, as an intro to objects. We will talk about them a lot. You know, they have a lot of features. Polymorphism, inheritance, encapsulation. We have not encapsulated anything. So yes, we will see a lot. And don't worry if you don't if it is hard at this, at the moment. Don't just don't worry. We will we'll write a lot of classes. We will. Don't worry at all about any of the things if, mm -hmm. if, if they don't make sense at the time. If, for example, writing a function does not make sense, just follow. Just follow the sessions. Write your, ask you know, your questions, write comment, and we will answer them. And this application will grow and grow, and you will be, at some point, very you know, fluent with these things, and you, that you won't believe that. So, yes. I say we I think say goodbye. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Follow and share. Till the next session. Bye bye. bye.